guys? Aaron here. Guys and girls, all four of them that watch the channel. No, I'm kidding. Tons of girls watch this channel. Anyways, today's video is going to be about the Slinger Stack. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the differences between the weight plate version, the one you either put your bumpers or your Olympic plates on, and the weight stack versions. Since I originally had the uh, plate loaded version, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you why I decided to upgrade and things that I noticed that were different between the two versions. So you have the slinger, you have the lower pulley, maybe you have the seat. You've decided to go that route. You either have it mounted to your rack or you've made something like I have uh, off to the side to get away from the rack. Uh, if you don't know, I already have a whole video on how you can do that and then it actually folds flush into the wall. Uh, so if you haven't seen that one, check it out. Uh, anyways, you already have all that stuff. Now it's time to decide what version to get. Maybe you have the band version. Maybe you want the cheapest route and you're deciding if you want to upgrade to the plate loaded version or the weight stack version. Now the difference is first off in the price. I believe it is 135 bucks plus like maybe $40, 40 to $50 shipping for the, basically you get a bungee cord uh, and a bracket at the bottom. And then you have like a, basically like a, a loading pin with a wider base. You put your plates on it, you hooks at the top with a carabiner. You can pull like that. That's the one I originally had. The only reason I decided to get this one because it is $830 plus $125 shipped to Oregon. Uh, is because somebody had it locally and uh, they had bought it originally. They thought it was gonna work for them. It turns out it did not, so I snagged it. Uh, I got a pretty good deal on it, but that's not the point of this video. Well, it kinda is the point. I don't think I would've bought it if it was full price from Rogue for 850 bucks, but I did a little bit of research before I purchased this one on OfferUp and I could not find anything cheaper, even like building one myself, because it's not like these are specialized plates for Rogue. They just have one inch holes, they have the rod, the guide rods, all that stuff. Piecing that all together through like either Amazon or specialty websites was gonna run me a lot more than 850 bucks. So that's one thing to be said. But anyways, I'm rambling on, let's get to the rest of the video. All right, here she is guys in all her glory, her, her stacked glory. Uh, basically what you get is you get 300 pounds of weight stack and they are in 10 pound increments. This top piece is also 10 pounds. I don't have the stickers on here to label it because I haven't decided if I want to paint it and also haven't received five of the plates. Uh, it's neither here nor there, but, uh, it was missing five of the 10 pound plates Rogue sending me them. So I haven't put any of the stickers on yet. So basically besides the weight plates, you get a bracket at the bottom. It's a big, thick, beefy bracket. If you have the hole spacing already in your rack, the one inch holes, it'll line up perfectly. Uh, it has multiple holes just in case you have different um, depths on your rack, uh, but it should line up perfectly with 24. Uh, the smallest it can go on is a 24. This is smaller, this is a 19, and I will show you Maybe at the end of this video, um, uh, the modifications I made to this one to get it onto this thing, so that way it swung flush into the wall. But let's do the review first. Um, basically, you get the bolts down there. Uh, there is two rubber stoppers at the bottom here that these guide rods go into. And the guide rods, they go on either side of the weight stack to make sure they don't move uh, side to side. And then there is another... Um, uh, rod here that goes down into here and you can make your selection with the selector pin all the way down um, it attaches to the top the same way it attaches to the bottom but what you get here is a metal bracket and then also a piece of UHM plastic that way if you pull down really hard uh, you're not going to have the metal smashing into metal. It will essentially go into a spotter-like UHM piece of plastic. And uh, there is a grommet, not right here because you don't need it. The cable will not shred because it's hitting the UHM plastic, but there is a grommet on the top portion, and that's what you get with the kit. All right, I lied. You do get one more piece with the kit, and this brings me to my first point. The other piece that you get with this kit is you get a new cable. 
okay? The uh, plate-loaded version, it comes with a special cable, but this one has a different cable because instead of having a carabiner clip on the other side here, it actually threads with a bolt into the weight stack selector. So right here is where this twists on. You cannot use the uh, existing one that you had with the, the other version uh, if you're upgrading, but it does come with this piece. The length of the cable, it's shorter. And you might think, that's not a good thing. Why would I want less for my money? But in this case, it is better. Now, when I come down here, I'm at a full, I'm at a full stretch. So when I pull whatever desired weight and I go up to the top, I'm fully extended, but there's still a stretch. With the other cable, it was sort of, it was down here. So imagine I'm pulling here. I, I'm at the top of my movement, but I'm not able to get the full stretch on my lats or whatever kind of pulling movement I'm doing. I kind of had to lean way out here in order to do that. So that is one thing that I noticed, which I really liked. And I don't know if they maybe took some feedback from people who bought the slander originally and then decided to shorten up that cable that could come like that with the, uh, the plate loaded version now. I'm not sure. But one thing to consider is this cable is much better. The other thing that's cool and something to consider is that there's no swing with the weight stack. This is a, just like something you'd find at a gym, uh, you can pull on it and no matter how much, you know, you jerk your movement, not that you're supposed to be doing it like that anyways, but it's not gonna go anywhere. With the plate loaded version, if I am to pull this, let's keep in mind the only thing that's keeping it steady is that cable on the bottom that attaches to the bottom there. So even though that is there, when you go up, there's still some swing. And what happens is when it comes down onto that plate load base, it may come over to the sides and there is a little piece that juts out. It dinged there all the time. Not, not for me, I never swing the weights, but you know, if you're trying to do that last cheat rep and get all that, you know, get, get that last rep in, it will potentially bang into the sides and you know, it's just kind of herky jerky and pulls and uh, you know, for the money though, it's a much cheaper option. But that's just one thing to consider uh, when going with this one. The other thing is that the motion is more fluid. Okay, so it's fluid, meaning it feels really nice. There's no, it's consistent throughout the whole movement. And also, if you have the other version, keep in mind you have a 15 pound bungee cord basically, a, you know, band attached to the bottom of it. So when you get to the bottom portion of your movement, the band is fully stretched out and essentially is gonna add um, resistance to your pull. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Plenty of people use bands when they're doing squats or, you know, um, bench presses to give themselves a little bit extra at the top portion of that movement. So this is essentially what that does. But this one is going to be more consistent in tracking your progress, if that makes sense, since you're just going up in uh, weight. Uh, so just, just something else to consider between, you know, when you're deciding uh, between these two. Okay. Here is the main reason that I decided to jump ship on the other version and go with this version. Switching weights. Switching weights on the other one. It's hooked to the cable. I gotta get it off. I gotta go get a bumper plate. I gotta put that on. And you put it on at the top and it drops down all the way. You gotta keep putting them on there. You gotta take off the carabiner clip each time you want to adjust the weight. Uh, doing a drop set if you're doing it really fast or trying to, you know, keep the rest time at a minimum is annoying it this carabiner was very difficult to get on to the hole in the top of the uh, base that the plates go on uh, so it was annoying it was annoying me and I want I want low rest times and I want fluid uh, workouts so if I wanted to do a drop set on this you know essentially I could pull and I literally don't even have to get up all right well I did I did get up to put to put that down because I don't want the weight smashing down. But go down, do more, down, down, whatever, adjust up. Say I want to do a warm-up set. Usually I come over here and do a warm-up set, two of them before I hit the actual set. I'd have to keep throwing the bumper plates on and then taking them off and this and that. So I love the fact that this just has a selector switch and I can just boom, 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 boom. That was the main reason I decided to switch and 
it was worth it just for that fact. All right, another thing to consider. I don't know where you're working out. I don't know what kind of space. Maybe you're in the house. Maybe you're next to your wife's office or something like that. This is very quiet compared to the other one. The plate-loaded version, when you pull on it, uh, metal pieces are hitting and uh, you know at the bottom the carabiners and you hear the every time it's it's a lot louder this one you don't really hear anything I can kind of hear the roller where I greased it up there but really the only sound you guys are hearing are the fans from the computers over there it is very very quiet so something else to consider if you're deciding between the two and noise is an issue it's not really an issue for me out here but I do like the fact that it is super quiet. All right, one more thing. Aesthetically. Aesthetically, this thing is pretty. I don't know. Aesthetically, this thing looks a lot better uh, on the rack than uh, the other version. The other version kind of looked like some makeshift sort of, uh, you know, had a big V here. Nobody wants a big V. Uh, and uh, it, it didn't look as good. This looks official. This looks nice. But the flip side of that is this is not coming off. There's no way, there's not, it's not like a quick pop release orange pin that you could put this thing away when you're not using it. So it works for me over here because I don't use this thing for anything other than the pulley system. But if you have this thing on the rack, you may want to go with the other version because if you're doing other things, like say you want people to squat on the inside of the rack on the two front uprights. Uh, they're not gonna be able to, this will be in the way. You can't put a J hook on the inside of this and do anything. Your rack, uh, unless you extend it and add some more uprights is pretty much that one of the corners is gonna be unusable. Okay, so now let's go through a couple of negative things that I've noticed about this. Number one is this hole right here. So. They put this hole right here and it doesn't go all the way through. It only goes in uh, a little bit, maybe you know a quarter inch or something like that. It's made because if you want to do just 10 pounds, you can put this here, right? But the problem is, is when you pull on it, it eventually will come out. Like that, that's not, see now, now I'm a liar, but it, it wiggles it wiggles out and eventually it falls, especially because that center rod hits down there and jostles it and it comes out eventually. Uh, I don't know why they didn't make it a little bit deeper so it would stay in there. Obviously, they didn't want to go too far because if you went all the way in with this, then the head of this thing would be smashing into that and that wouldn't work. Uh, but just a little bit more depth would have brought it about here and it, it would be fine. It's one negative thing I notice. Now, what I do instead of that is I just take it and I put it through here. There's just a little lip there. So now, essentially, I can do that, and it's not going to go anywhere. So that's really not the end of the world. But the other thing that I noticed, and I know this is a complaint for a few different people, is if you want to do only 5 or 10 pounds, what happens is sometimes when you come down and you went all the way out, this piece will hit right there. So if you're going down, you can see sometimes that hits. It's not really the end of the world, especially if you do it slowly. It, it tends not to uh, hit too much, but it will hit. It's not, this one's not defective. That's just how they all come. So a little bit of a negative point there. If I wanted to, I could probably attach something to the bottom of this rod and attach it to the bottom. That way it stayed in line all the way. And I might do that in the future, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, uh, so just two negative things that I noticed about this guy. One more thing to consider guys on, I don't know if this is on the negative portion of it, but uh, it only goes in 10 pound increments. So the five pound increments are lost, meaning 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on. But there's an easy way around this, and I think it only costs another 40 bucks. There's this thing called these adder weights. They clip around the top portion of this, and they're each two and a half pounds. So you clip those on there, essentially you have 15 here, 25, 35, 45. So just a relatively cheap option if you go this route and you were wanting those five, or even if you wanted 17 and a half or something like that pounds, uh, you can do that. I lied, you cannot do 17 and a half pounds, but what you can do is 22 and a half pounds, 25 and so on.
That's what I meant to say. All right, guys, moment of truth. Aaron, how do you put this thing away when you're done? What do, what do you do when you want to use the GHT so you don't smash your head into it? I'll show you. Voila, there it is, folded flush into the wall and totally out of the way. Now, once it's over here like this, uh, I can put the seat back on, I can put the lower pulley back on. I haven't exactly figured out how I'm gonna do that. I may just put some hooks in other places so I can just put them on there so I actually don't have to put them onto the rack since there's a little bit of space. But this is how it works and uh, it folds up really nicely and then you can just fold it out when you're uh, wanting to use it. All right guys, so in the very beginning of the video, I mentioned some modifications that had to be made in order to get this stack onto uh, this rack. Since this is a fold out rack, uh, it does not have number one, the one inch holes drilled anywhere. I had to drill the holes where I needed them on the top portion and the bottom portion. Uh, the top portion I had already done and if you watch the other video where I teach you how to make the folding slinger setup, uh, I'll sh I show you exactly how to make those one inch holes. I already had one at the top. I had to make one at the bottom because this middle unit needs to go through this upright. Okay. Uh, the other modifications I had to make, I had to put the five eighths holes in this cross member as well. The other thing I had to do since this piece was way too long, is I had to cut it off with the jigsaw in order to get it to fit on here. As you can see, it does fold and fits underneath the bracket because there's wiggle room on these brackets so that way you can either fold them um, up an incline or down a decline depending on how your garage is set up. Uh, but I did have to cut part of the back off. I had to do that on this piece. I had to do it on the UHM piece up at the top and I also had to do it on the metal piece that goes at the top. I had to drill the 5 8 holes at the top. Uh, if you want more detail, hit me up and I'll do a video on exactly what I did to get it onto these 19-inch uh, cross members here. But it can be done, and if that's something what you wanted to see, please let me know in the comments section and I'll show you exactly how I did it. All right, before I go, let me give you my final thoughts on this whole weight stack slinger setup deal. Uh, I don't recommend that you, if you're looking for a cable machine, that you go the slinger route. I recommend to save money, you get yourself a different kind of cable machine that's that, that already comes all set up and you don't have to do any sort of modifications to get it set up. I also don't recommend getting the slinger uh, at all uh, for your rack if you have the space. The only reason I would recommend uh, getting the slinger is if you only have room for your rack and you need absolutely need to get a pulley system on there. But keep in mind, uh, you're gonna be paying a lot of money. And the only reason I keep adding on to this particular um, setup is because I've already bought all the pieces. I have to sell all of them and then buy a functional trainer type piece of equipment. I don't think it would fit in here. That's the only reason I keep adding on to this one. I don't have the room for a functional trainer, but if you are looking for a functional trainer, just buy one. And if it'll fit in your blueprint, uh, don't go this route. But if you already have this stuff, this is the person I'm making this video for. Uh, the stack's way cooler than the, uh, the plate loader version. So uh, until next time, guys, peace.